Okay, what's up everybody? How are you? I want to thank you all for showing up today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I want to welcome you all to our 21 day challenge 21 day challenge i, I always I, this, the, the the name of the program um is an interesting one if you noticed in the in the emails i never i never called it keto did you guys notice that i did that for a reason because i knew i'd scare people and then <laughs> and then um because i I'm, I'm actually not even a fan of keto just to you know i said that in a couple of emails i'm not a fan of keto um i'm fine with it it's just i'm not a fan of any program actually i'm not a fan of Paleo. I'm not a fan of keto. Keto. I'm not a fan of Mediterranean diet. Um, I, I'm not a fan of the vegan diet. I'm not a fan of plant-based diets. I'm not a fan of any of them. Um, I'm a fan of personalizing your nutrition. That is it. That's all I got. Thank you for showing up. So, no, but that's that's really what I'm trying to do here. And this is 2022. So some people <clears throat> will be excited if I market the word keto, but many people will actually be scared away from it. So, um, but don't let that scare you. You guys are all ones that signed up. So thank you. Um, but just know that, um, you know, if you want to dive in and really, you know, get into ketosis, that's fine. Most of you probably will not. And that's fine. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think I was talking to, I think it was Val, right on, we were texting this morning. I said, she's like, she really, she's really attached to one of you like my little black dress program, right? You like that one? Cool. That's yes, awesome. I did. It works. They're very similar. They're very yeah. similar. They, they all work. They all work because you focus on it. This is actually, yeah, it was funny because I was kind of going back and she's like, I really like that program, but I don't want to be, I want to do keto. It's actually not that much different, but you just don't know that. Um, we, we tend to get uh, our, our, what we've read or what we've may even have done in the past um, tends to get away in our tends to um, affect our future in our present you know state. So, um, but yeah. So again, this is not a keto program of the past, you, you know, or anything that most people have promoted. When I think of keto, I think of dairy first of all. There's no dairy really in this program because I took it out because I don't believe in I don't believe people should be eating pasteurized dairy. So, um, but if you look, if you look at any, uh, ingredients, sorry, look at, if you go to, if you go to like Costco, you'll see like keto products. That's already a red flag for me. First of all, they, they, they're up in price. They're usually fairly expensive. And, um, they, uh, they usually have two ingredients that I don't recommend in any of my coaching programs. That's dairy and almonds. So let's write that down. Let's avoid dairy and almonds. I don't care if you're plant-based, vegan, vegetarian, keto, <laughs> don't eat dairy and don't eat almonds. And I'll just kind of answer the whys right now. Um, dairy is pasteurized. It is heated, overly heated. And um, when you overly heat anything, the nutrients you think are there are not there. It becomes a digestive nightmare. And my big focus is digestion. So let's write down... Um, Let's write down nutrition and then three, and I'm kind of, I'm going to jump around here. Um, but these are the most, these are more important than anything that I have in that virtual resource area. So when I think of nutrition, I think of three key things. Okay. Number one is digestion. Can I digest this food? And I'm going to know that and if, because of a few symptoms. <clears throat> Am I bloated after I eat it? Am I gassy? Do I have at least one bowel movement a day? Do I have heartburn or acidity? Uh, could be loose stools, could be a, a reaction of poor digestion as well. So uh, also you could just feel tanked after a meal. That's all not good, right? So again, we're just trying to figure out the right fuel source for your needs. And much of that is based upon digestion. So that's number one regardless of the nutrition and inter intervention that I do. All right. Any questions on digestion real quick? So I work with people with gastritis, IBS, really bad symptomology, and we try to repair the gut, but that is the focus. So that is actually the key of my 12 week program. I start people off with an anti-inflammatory nutrition program. And, um, you know, Holly, who's on this call, one of my, one of my, one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, she's already done that. I actually encouraged her to do this one. 
um, just because she's been doing an anti-inflammatory nutrition program, but I wanted to give her a different uh, kind of a little different feel of things. And it's not going to be that much different. It's just, we're just going to up the fats a little bit more, but her husband is still going to follow hopefully the anti-inflammatory program because I still got some GI stuff to work on. Second, second most important variable is blood sugar balance. Blood sugar balance. Now, keto, the, the great thing about keto, it will balance your blood sugar levels because it's upping your fats, which don't have a blood sugar response. So, you know, much of the world has a metabolic health issue. Do you guys know how many people have a metabolic health issue right now? It's crazy. 80% of the population has a metabolic health disorder. You can look it up. Type in metabolic health disorder. What percentage of the population? It is insane. At the heart of that is actually not digestion, but it is, I mean, it is, but it isn't. Um, it's blood sugar issues. And it's really simple. People eat too many damn carbs. It's really that simple. <laughs> there's only three things to eat. There's carbs, there's proteins, and there's fats. This is really simple if you really break it down. We just eat the bad carbs. We need, we need carbs, we need proteins, we need fats. It, it is not rocket science. And we just can't tolerate that many carbs. I'm going to be 50 in a few days. What day is this? Six? Yeah. So my birthday is on November 19th. So share that with you guys. <laughs> I'm going to be 50 years old. Um, I don't eat that many carbs on average. I have deviation days or anything goes days or call them cheat days, but I don't eat a lot of carbs. And um, I have recently um, got a continuous glucose monitor, which I'd like you to write down that word, three words, continuous glucose monitor. That is the best way to figure out how you're doing with your blood sugar balance and put and hormonal balance as a whole so it is did i mention it was 2022 i think i did so i'm gonna say again hey it's 2022 i can push a button on my phone now check glucose i don't have blood sugar problems because or i don't have any problems figuring out what i should eat because i know where i'm at every second so that's called a continuous glucose monitor this is actually more about what I wanted to show you guys on this program than, than really anything else is that we don't, we don't have to be, uh, you don't have to listen to random people giving you advice anymore. You can actually find out where you are. So I don't have to prick my finger like people used to, right? That's a, just a glucometer. This is a CGM continuous glucose monitor. So, um, I have a deal, a partnership set up with a company named Vary. And um, I would highly recommend you consider trying it. You don't have to. I will give you, um, I mean, I can, you can live indirectly through me. <laughs> I can tell you how I respond to foods, but it's kind of cool for you to know. Because um, this is kind of what it's all about. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I can tell you things, but once you feel it, experience it, you're more likely to find a new way. And that's, that's really what I want to do. I, my, my kids don't listen to me. My wife doesn't listen to me. My dog doesn't listen to me. And after a while, neither do my clients. We have a very short lived <laughs> um, period of time where people listen to me and then they just like, yeah, I got this, right? You get a few new tips and that's cool. But I really do want you to experience these things. I don't want to be the guy who just tells you things because that's what we do, right? As moms, as parents, um, and it just, it's so much better when you get it and it's cool. So anyway, so you just, uh, you know, I'll kind of be bringing that up, but it's very, I can even, um, if, I'll, I'll try to get the link in here in a minute, but so that's, that's how, that's a one way to measure blood sugar balance, but I'll, I'll be sharing with you how we can lower blood sugar balance in our day-to-day -day interactions. So, um, I'll get to that in a moment. Mm. So blood sugar balance number two. Arguably, that could be the most important thing. If you don't have gut issues, like if you're not bloated and gassy and your belly's not distended and, you know, you go to the bathroom well, blood sugar balance is probably the, you know, the number one thing you want to achieve here, okay? Which is why people go to the keto program and have results. The problem with the keto program is they're not interested in digestion. So people 
do it for a short period of time. And they're like, dang, my stomach hurts. <laughs> like, I can't go to the bathroom. I'm cramping. And that's because they've had too much dairy and they're dehydrated and they're not eating enough vegetables and fiber. So again, it's not the perfect program, but there is no perfect program unless we create the program together. Does that make sense? So it's really trying to come up with meals. And that's really my goal of this program is like, I, I just like you to have about three different breakfast ideas. Right. I like you to have a, you know, I don't know, five, five to 10 lunch and dinner ideas. Would that be cool? Like, that's it. And then maybe a snack, a few snack ideas. On that note, on nutrition, I would like you to eat three to four times per day. So let's write that down. Okay. Notice I'm not even showing you any resources because it doesn't matter. There's, there's, there's a great amount of information there. It's too, almost too much. I would like you to eat three to four meals per day. This is a really big concept. And uh, what I mean by a meal is this. If you have a cup of coffee with cream in it, that is a meal. That's a meal. All right. If you have a bite of your child's dinner, that is a meal. All right. So some of you graze all day long and because of the, and with that model, if you think about it, that is a meal. Okay. Um, I want you to only eat or shove things in your mouth or, or eat three to four times a day. Does that, that, that make sense? For 20, over 20 years, I told people to eat every two to three hours, five to six meals a day. My results are way better now, way better now in the last seven years or so. Okay. So meal frequency is something that I learned in you know, everything that I read is supposed to increase your metabolism by 15%. I don't believe it. So um, it's way more obsessive as well. I did all that. You know, let's just make it simple. Keep it simple. It's math. If I have to eat six times a day, I'm more likely going to screw up and have to have stronger willpower than eating three to four meals a day. Does that, does that make sense? Unless you're Michael Phelps, where you have to shove in 10,000 calories a day, it just doesn't make sense for the average person to prepare and plan that much. So we just want to make it easy. Any, any questions on that? Just meal frequency is a really big one. And it, you may have to stop yourself a lot because I know for me, having kids too, I'm like, ah, that's a pretty good piece of chicken right there. Like, <laughs> let me just eat that real quick. Anybody ever do that? Raise your hand. Come on. Come on. Yeah. So anyway, just uh, something like, try not to taste everything, like constantly if you're cooking. I mean, just depends, but just three to four meals. Okay. Um, and I want to just keep focus on the, on the, that, the basic concepts for a moment too. So let's talk about the best way to burn fat while you're not working out. Does anybody want to know that? How to be a more effective fat burner. Their number one way to be a more effective fat burner is digestive rusting. And I know a lot of you have heard it before. How many are, um, and that's, that's, that's a, uh, uh, term coined by my, uh, colleague, Dr. Heidi Dulay. We used to do podcasts to together. She's a nutritionist who's at Stanford and, uh, she called it digestive rusting because you're not eating for a period of time, but in the mainstream culture, it's called intermittent fasting. So just a few hands here. How many of you are doing intermittent fasting right now? Raise your hand. No, Robin, Elise. No? Okay. No, Val? No? Okay. Kinda, says Holly. Okay, get back on it, Holly. Uh, Lisa, any any updates from you, Lisa? Chats, you know, nodding of your head, shaking hand, you know, whatever. Um, so, this is probably one of the best ways. Intermittent fasting, I like digestive resting better because, again, it's just these terms, keto and intermittent fasting, they seem so harsh, don't they? Uh, again, we got a, got a sick kid. Okay. All right. Um, so, um, it's probably the easiest and fastest way to burn fat is to just, again, not eat for a period of time during the day. And it doesn't have to be overly done, which is what people have done and made it a problem. Kind of like keto. It doesn't have to be so extreme. 14 hours is what I consider to be ideal. 14 to 16 hours of a digestive rest. Okay, so we'll, we'll figure that out. So, Elise, I'm going to use you. Okay, what time is your ideal time to be in bed? 10 p.m. 
10 p.m. Perfect. Awesome. You didn't say two in the morning. Awesome. Oh, God, <laughs> I, have no. some people, I have some people like that. It makes my life difficult. All right. So 10 p.m. What time is your goal to be asleep? Two different 10 30 10 p.m yeah. right. hey some, some people like to read in bed or watch tv so i'm just that's why i'm asking so no. all right so write down eat approximately three hours before bedtime okay one of the worst things you can do again i get people's numbers every day people who eat later at night have trouble losing weight and balancing hormones and they wake up around one to three in the morning okay so again, I'm a principal guy. I do. I almost don't care what you eat if you follow these principles. Um, I'm gonna get to that part, but this is more important. So if you want to be a vegan or a vegetarian, follow the same damn principles. It's fine. All right, doesn't matter. All right. So, so, Elise. So eat around seven, seven thirty. Okay. So last call seven, seven thirty. Do not shove anything in your mouth for Elise. 7 seven thirty. now sometimes i don't know about you guys but sometimes i'm hungry at about 8 30. anybody ever get hungry at 8 30. and i want to eat a snack i want something so i've done a better job of trying to figure out if i'm going to be hungry after i eat <laughs> so i try to eat more so I don't get to that point. And that's, that's what I mean about minimizing your meal frequency. Eat more. Like some people just don't eat enough. And that's, that's a problem. So if you don't eat enough, specifically protein and fat and fiber, you're going to be hungry an hour later. Something is wrong. So if you're hungry one to two hours later, something is wrong. Okay? Just you're out of balance. And it's probably because your blood sugar levels are dropped. Okay, so it's it's usually going to be a blood sugar related issue. You can get a little more um, understanding of that again with the continuous glucose monitor. But I'm just giving you the the basics. So eat, just eat more, and in each meal now, so whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, or a snack, it's really the same formula. Number one, what's my protein? Number one. Okay, so let's write that down. So here's the the meal formula. <clears throat> what's my protein number one number two what are my low starchy vegetables that are not going to elicit a high glucose response like broccoli peas green things right lettuce kale bok choy those are green they they're not going to elicit and a high sugar response, so then I'm not going to have a high insulin response. So again, whether I'm on a plant-based diet or a paleo diet or a keto diet, we want those things, right? But we also need protein as well, right? So if you're not going to eat animal protein, well, we got to figure out where we're going to get protein from. Maybe you're going to do pea and rice protein shakes all day. I don't, I don't care what you do. There's, I'll give you recommendations, but we need protein. I, I like lentils, but they're still high in carbs, and but they have a great amount of fiber. Lentils are one of my favorite foods, but we need to get a good 90 grams of protein in. So you got to figure out how you're going to do that, <clears throat> right? So, um, and again, we can get more specific with protein sources, but we, we're going to need, you can, you can also do this equation. So how much protein do you need? It's minimum of 0.6 times your body weight. That's minimum. But ideally, if you're doing, you know, athletic training, conditioning, you want it closer to about 0.8 times your body weight. But it's going to be a good 90 grams for many of you, minimum. And what that looks like, if you're eating animal protein, it's, it's a little bit easier. It's a, it's one plum is about 30 grams of protein of protein like chicken turkey fish all right one plum is about 30 grams of protein it's about four to five eggs i think too so it's a lot of eggs most people don't eat if they eat eggs they actually don't eat enough eggs so like two eggs is not enough protein you know if you're looking to get enough protein so uh so just touching on that subject all right and then or you have a protein powder so i can get about 20 grams usually in a protein powder, it's 20 to 30 grams 
and protein powders. I love, I love hemp hearts, by the way. I can get a pretty good amount of protein in hemp hearts and fat and fiber. Love it. Hemp hearts, chia seeds in a smoothie. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then we need a fat source is our third key thing. Proteins, low starchy veggies, and fats. Fats like avocados, guacamole, coconut oil, MCT oil, olive oil, olives. I love shredded coconut. I just ordered uh, from Thrive today. I can go over that today if you like. Mana, M-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. You guys know what mana is? It's coconut meat. So love that. It's a medium chain triglyceride. Got a, it's got it's got a bad rap. It's fine, um, unless you have um, specific gene that you can test with your DNA. Um, generally speaking, it's fine. We're going to say something, Elise. What if you don't like coconut? Yeah, you got to find some other fat sources. Okay. <laughs> so there's other fat sources like salmon is a really high fatty fish. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, we just gotta find what works for you, right? That's the so that's the personalization, right? Like, hey, let's yeah. find something else. Um, so yeah, just but we need some fat. Otherwise, you're gonna be hungry. Just make just kind of remember fat and fiber make you full. I like the F F F. Fat and fiber make you full. And I just want you to be aware, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm really hungry on this program. Like people who do do keto are never hungry, honestly. Um so, um, and then again, the diff the main difference between like a keto program, as you as you can look in the cat, I mean, the, the manual is pretty pretty solid, um, is that the main focus instead of being protein is fat. Okay, I'm telling you, like, hey, it, you know, and in sixty percent fat is it may seem like a lot to you. It's actually not that much. Um, it's like even in the little black dress program, you're probably about fifty percent fat. That's why I'm saying it's like because there's no grains on that program. So it's not that much different. You know, there's, we, we used uh, the trail mixes, if you remember, the nut balls for snacks. Those are fine. Those are totally fine. So you can, you can actually intermix those programs. Think of the keto as just being a real, the, the keto program, the way it's laid out as being a model. I'm not, but I'm even like my model, like I was just telling you like, Hey, try not to eat past seven, seven thirty. but that's my model or that's my rule. But at the same time, like, I don't follow that every day. But if you want to go keto, you know, it's, you, you kind of like need to go at least 60%. The, the, and the other problem with keto besides the dairy and the almonds and the traditional diet is that it's really, really hard to be social. <laughs> I, I think it's an, a very effective program. It's actually highly recommended for, um, you know, kids with seizures. If you know anybody like that, um, there's tons of research with um, specific populations. I'd say even Alzheimer's, you know, um, anybody, any kind of brain developmental stuff going on, aut autistic kids, I'd put them on a keto program um, in a second. Um, if you have injuries and you can't work out, I did this when I had my two knee surgeries, I definitely went higher fat. I just don't like to call it keto. I might have been in ketosis, but I didn't measure, you know, but just we cannot tolerate carbs when we do when we are sitting all day and when we get older. And that's the one thing I noticed when I got my glucometer is that, you know, I'm, I'm relatively active right now, but, you know, I, I was like fruit just skyrocketed my sugar levels. So I was like, wow, like, oh, my God, this is so that was kind of my, my big finding was like, wow, I am my sugar levels are flying way higher than I thought they would be. <laughs> I'm not diabetic. I'm not pre-diabetic. I don't have metabolic health disorder. Um, but damn, I just cut out the fruit out of my diet and maybe, maybe the grains. I don't have many grains. Um, and my stomach got way flatter. It's, it's pretty crazy. Just a, just a little bit of change. So it doesn't have to be a lot. I'll still have a piece of fruit once in a while, but it's, I no longer put fruit in my smoothies. I'm just throwing that out there even though fruits are a staple in, in smoothies, just be careful. You know, and you'll, if you're hungry an hour after your smoothie, it's probably not handling it very well. If you want to get more clarity, use a glucometer. Okay. So those are the two key issues on nutrition that I tend to focus on digestion, blood sugar balance. And the third is really meal prep, how we prepare our foods. And just a real key thing on this one is this. If you overheat your foods, you're destroying your foods. Um, right around 115, 119, something like that, degrees, internal temperature, you start to denature the proteins, the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrition is not the same. 
at around 220 degrees of internal temperature, the food is pretty much useless. So if you like overcook, you know, something on a barbecue, you overcook a piece of chicken, you overcook your vegetables, it doesn't matter what it is, it's not going to really give you much energy. It's not going to give you protein. It's not going to give you what it says on the ingredient label. So temperature is key. At the same time, if we eat raw vegetables, a lot of times people's gut does not handle that very well. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right. So if you get like bloated and gassy eating raw veggies, a little bit. When I went to Asia, they I, I was like, God, I feel so good there because they cook things at a really good temperature and they don't really do a lot of processing that we do. People in Italy say the same, who go to Italy, I, a, lot of, a lot of my clients go to Europe. They say, God, I don't usually eat gluten. Bye, Val. I don't usually eat gluten, but I went to Italy and I felt so good there and I didn't gain weight. And they're like, and if I eat gluten here in the United States, I usually feel terrible. So again, it's a processing issue. There's a lot of processing issues based upon how we cook things and prepare things. So um, juices. Like I think home juicing is great because you say you juice celery or something like that, drink it right away. But if as soon as you put it in a container and let it sit for a while, those nutrients tend to go bye-bye. It's a very expensive drink, four to five dollars for a juice that's pasteurized or been sitting on a shelf for even an hour or two. It's not what you think it is. So we spend a lot of money on things we hope that will make us feel better. And they just, they're just not, they're just not going to do it. So um, take home message on food prep is try to control your food source rather than go out to eat. If you're going to juice, do it at home. Uh, try not to get roasted nuts and seeds. Eat the raw ones because they're not overheated. If you're going to drink dairy products, go raw dairy. They can, you can get that at Molly Stones in your area. You Bay Area, Bay Area people, I'm no longer part of your culture. Um, but uh, Molly Stones um, is good. Uh, what else? Uh, Whole Foods is not. Um, Lenardi's has raw dairy products. It's going to, it's cost a lot of money, but, um, but it's, it's healthier for you. Otherwise I wouldn't drink dairy personally. Uh, I do get raw cheese myself and, um, most of my other products that are like coconut yogurt. I would rather have that. I like Coco June yogurt, H harmless harvest yogurt. Those are coconut based. All the other non-dairy yogurts suck. Um, you know, Lisa's like, eh, you know, like, like there's an almond milk yogurt. It's like, eh. you can try it, but Cheryl likes it. You see, she, she tends to like it, but, um, but yeah, I like, I like the coconut one better. Coco June's actually pretty good. So maybe you don't like coconut, but that one's actually thick. So anyway, um, butter and ghee, those are on this program. I think those are generally easy to digest. Ghee is, uh, the way it's processed makes it easier to digest. Um, but butter and ghee have tons of nutritional value. So you'll see that those are on a lot of the keto recipes, but I eat butter and ghee regularly. So, um, and you, those are, you're, you're less likely to be, uh, have a problem with ghee or butter or even cheese than you are milk and cream and ice cream and not, you know, things like that. Um, there's another thing too. Um, butter. Yeah. Oh yeah. Goat, goat cheese is another one. So goat cheese is probably the easiest to digest according to food sensitivity tests. Just kind of keep that in mind. So, um, there's a lot of good uh, goat cheeses out there at Whole Foods and stuff like that. So that's our nutrition information. Any um, any questions right now before I kind of go more to the actual resource area? Okay. So I wanted to kind of just give you those guidelines. So, you know, I just want you to look at the, the I'll go over it right now. I'll go over some recommend, recommended uh, timing of meals and things like that. Give you some ideas, but it doesn't have to be follow along with Brian's program, okay? Um, you can create your own thing and send it to me. I'm fine with that, <laughs> all right? Just so you know that. Um, and the more, really, the more you communicate with me, the better. I have a client, actually, I'll show you what she is sending me right now. I think it's the best thing. Uh, I have, my clients send me, based upon how they like to do things, that we, they all kind of do something different. I have some clients that sent, have sent me a picture of every meal for six months. Um, I have some people that have done my fitness pal 
for years and they send me every freaking day my fitness pals um i have some people that do nothing um <laughs> <laughs> they don't send me anything um so and uh, but I, I got i have a new client um carrie who i'll share in a moment here let's see i'm sharing my screen real quick so this is what she is doing and i like it i really i think it's a great idea i'm a paper guy anybody else paper people paper people versus technology people like i'm a technology person but clearly by the number of emails you've all received i'm not very good anymore i swear i used to be like on my game but every time i i can't I used to have like technology automations. Great. You guys have seen every email for the last, the next 23 days come in advance. I apologize. I have tried to get this fixed so many times. I've hired the best virtual assistants from India and Pakistan. And I don't know what the hell is going on with this little language issue or something, but you should not receive 23 emails in one day. I, I don't know what this is happening. I, I looked at it. I have had four people look at it. I don't know. So, um, but I'm a paper guy nowadays. Um, my life is, I can't keep up with current times, I guess. So, um, so check out, uh, this, this is my Voxer. If you guys don't know what Voxer is, if, if you haven't gotten it yet, I think everybody's on there, but I know like Lisa, you know, worked with me in the past. Robin worked with me in the past like this, you know, it's like, you guys are used to texting. I know, or emails. I, I actually hate emails. Uh, and, um, I, I tell my clients, don't email me. I may not get back to you. So, um, and you know, try not to text me. I mean, I, I like to keep everything in one place under your name. So, um, so Marsha here, I've been working with her for over 10 years. She sent me her numbers today. She's just doing weight. And the reason is when she first started with me, she was like 300 pounds and she was more than the scale would offer. So um, she couldn't, um, so now she's down to 168. So she is, uh, uh, but she she was at an early point when she was working with me, we couldn't get body fat anyway because she was too heavy. So, um, so I just was fine with the weight and we just kind of kept that. But um, ideally, we get more than that. So this is Carrie. I just started working with her. <laughs> she had a deviation last night. She sent me the picture of her sugar cookies. And, um, but you know, she's she's already, she's in she's in her first week. She just lost three point six pounds. And uh, she's not doing this program. She's doing my anti-inflammatory program. But like I said, they're all very similar. Um, so she's lost about four pounds, and that's what I'm looking for on a daily basis. Okay. So Renfo scale. Does everybody have a, a, a what should we call it? A smart scale? At least you got a scale at the house. Uh, Robin does. I have a scale. I might have a smart scale somewhere, but we have a regular yeah. scale. Yeah. So I would, I mean, use what you got right now, but I would love for you. Oh, I'm just going to dive into this for a moment. Okay. I would love for you to know your body fat and all these other numbers. Okay. No, I mean, not all of them. So I look at weight body fat i look at total body water i'm a big fan of assessing that see that she's 48.8 and muscle mass 105. now most people want to lose weight and they don't even talk about their muscle mass they just say i want to lose weight all right well let's just chop off your arm and I'll, it'll make you happy oh no, no that's not what i want oh okay so people want to lose fat weight so you got to be very specific too write down when you write down your goals please write down your goals write down, I want to lose fat weight, not, I don't want to lose weight. That's, that's not, that doesn't work. And we want to, so we want to be specific, right? <clears throat> when we're specific, <clears throat> can actually get better results. When we, when people lose weight, <clears throat> it's actually easy to lose weight. Don't eat. Very simple. That's how it works. Don't eat. Exercise a lot. And then you'll get injured. You'll screw up your metabolism, so on. So, it's very easy to lose weight. It's actually, it takes a plan, a better plan to lose body fat. And that's what we're trying to lose here. So we're, we want, so she's a 28.9% body fat. Okay. I would like you to send me this on a regular basis. So in three, in, in three weeks. So let's put it this. So write down this 10 pounds equals one dress size equals two to 2.5% body fat loss. Okay, so some of you want to lose like 20 pounds, right? So maybe 30 pounds. So just remember, 10 pounds equal to one dress size equals a two to 2.5% body fat. I would actually, if you, let's say your goal is 10 pounds right now, even though that's your goal, I would actually rather you lose 2.5% body fat than 10 pounds. 
because that means the ratio of muscle to fat is 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 better right you may lose 10 pounds but only lose 0.5 percent body fat if that happens to you i know you're not following my program i know you're not eating enough number one you're not eating enough protein you're doing too much cardio you're not doing strength training you're not sleeping something is wrong you're stressed something's wrong and that's okay i'm just i just want to point out that i can learn a lot about you from knowing your numbers i don't even need to talk to you but i can see what's going on if you lose too, too much weight too fast something's wrong if your muscle is going down too much like let's say you lose 10 pounds if you lose two pounds of muscle it's okay if you lose five of those pounds from muscle eh, that's not that that's not that good okay and you probably start feeling a little more fatigued you may be happy that you're losing weight but so that actually sometimes overrides it temporarily that happiness like hey i'm happy i can fit into that dress but you know it's you're if you're on a 500 calorie diet you're just it's just not so for long and you'll screw up your metabolism all right so is that so if, if you can send me this on a daily basis that'd be great here's the protocol Wake up in the morning. So this is my morning ritual. Let's write morning ritual down. So I'm big into rituals. Every morning, I would love for you to do this. And again, I'm just going to give you some guidelines and make it your own, okay? Number one, let's work on some conscious, slow, rhythmic breathing. I want you to work on breathing in and out of your nose and initiating from the rib cage right here expansion we'll talk about that in our workouts we'll talk about that about doing that all the time right now as i'm talking a lot i'd love for you all to be working on nose breathing not from your chest but from here there's going to be some of you <clears throat> that don't do as well because you have a pattern of chest breathing it's nothing to do with your diet maybe something to do with your diet but so, but the breathing, if I'm, if I'm stress breathing with a shortened, with shortened breaths, I'm going to be stressed. I'm going to be anxious. I'm going to make bad decisions in my life because I'm under urgency, where if I can just create calm and shift your hormonal system to a more parasympathetic, relaxed state, you'll actually make better choices with your food and everything will not seem as urgent. Okay. So breathing is actually my number one thing. I would love for you to start your day with even like a minute. But just to, it's just but just don't stop there. Do it when you're eating. Like chew your food and breathe. Don't be in a hurry. Try not to be in a hurry as you're eating fast before your next class, right, Robin? Shoving food down your mouth because you have to get to your next thing, right? That's that's what we do, right? We're fast eaters a lot of times. And again, we could be eating the best organic food on the planet. And not digest it very well okay so we got to break that food down and that happens why creating calm so let's just breathe for about a minute or so it could breathe longer uh number two go to the bathroom you're normally going to go to the bathroom when you wake up <laughs> um drink number three drink 16 ounces of water first thing in the morning every night my wife and i we get our our glasses we fill them up we put them on our bathroom sink to remember to drink water in the morning She's not very good at it still, but I drink my 24 ounces and uh, I do a good job on my hydration. <laughs> She's not as good. Even though she does put it on the counter, she tends to walk away from it and then go to the bathroom and then go to the kitchen. But I think it's an easy way to remember. She does, she, to, uh, but, but she does actually do a good job of going to the kitchen, even though she has in the bathroom. She goes in the kitchen and then puts, uh, usually she does lemon in warmer water. She likes hot water, so I'm easy. I just do room temperature. She's got to warm it up and put lemon in it. Whatever. She is getting her water in. Um, just drink some damn water. All right. Somehow, some way. Um, you could throw apple cider vinegar in that water, one to two tablespoons, and lemon. You can even throw some cayenne pepper in there to really jazz up your metabolism. It, that'll get you going. If you want to do warm because it's cold outside and it just feels good, it's awesome. Or room temperature. All right. So after that, step on the scale naked. Screenshot your numbers that come on your phone. 
the Renfo app, the Nuvita app, whatever you whatever you already use is fine. Okay, so if you're if you already have like Robin, I think you already have the Renfo app, right? Holly's got the Renfo app. Use that. You already have the history on there, so we can actually. It's kind of cool to have a history um, from the past too. And then at least if you don't have a scale, by the way, it's like twenty bucks on Amazon. Just super cheap, twenty to twenty five dollars. Just Renfo, R E N P H O. It'll be shipped in twenty four hours. Okay, I, I put that on the on the virtual resources as well. So that's your morning ritual. Okay, now I have another thing for you. If you could, you know. The, the sun's coming up later now, but if you can go outside as the sun is rising, you're going to actually balance your hormone levels and just hang out for a couple minutes. Some great research by Stanford. Uh, Dr. Uberman talks about this a lot. If you have some, you know, some sleep issues, this is one of the best things you could do. What it does is increases cortisol levels in the morning, which is what we want. We actually want our cortisol levels to be up in the morning. And one of the best ways to do that is not by drinking coffee, <laughs> but by going outside. Both actually do increase cortisol levels. One's more negative impacts coffee, but going out when the sun is coming up and seeing sunlight is one of the best ways to start your day. It's actually much easier in the summer, um, but if you just get a little bit of light, that'd be great. And then that's going to help you as we get closer to the evening to fall asleep and to go to sleep faster because your melatonin levels will be up in the evening, okay? So, especially if you travel East Coast, Europe, Asia, try to get right back into that sunshine in this hemisphere. You're gonna do really, really well. But if you have sleep issues, fatigue, go outside, just have some tea, have some coffee, whatever, all right? So, that would be a great morning ritual. Now, if you could, Exercise earlier in the morning. That would be awesome. So that would be my morning rituals. Okay, so I really wanted to set these foundations because I think all of this is way more important than talking about the keto program. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter what program you do. Seriously, if you follow these principles, it's gonna you're gonna be great. Okay. Now we do you do need to make sure you have enough protein, enough fat of carbs, but that's a work in progress. We'll, we'll work on that. That's day to day. Not, we don't need everything right now. Okay. So morning rituals, any questions on morning rituals? And again, make it your own. There could be prayer thrown in there. There could be uh, whatever you want. You know, some people have to work, you know, East coast time. It's not going to be perfect, but <clears throat> just, just do the best you can. Try to get your workouts done earlier than later. Okay. Maybe it's a walk with your dog, but I do want you to get some strength training as well. I'd love for you to work on some mobility work with like the self-massager, um, whether that be the self-massage gun, the foam roll, whatever. If you take my uh, my workouts virtually, uh, like tomorrow I teach at 7. There'll be a class at 8.15 on demand as well. Or sorry, um, what is it? Uh, virtual. And then we have on-demand classes. Uh, and we have Cheryl teaching at 6 and 8.30. If you already go to a gym, you're going to get strength training, whatever. Just get some workouts. Okay, if it's just walking this week, that's fine. But remember, sitting is the worst thing you could do. <clears throat> we need to move that body. I don't care. You maybe you go dancing. Let's put some music on and dance. Just shake your body. But I'd love for you to get two days a week of strength training at minimum. And if you just put on me, um, whether live stream or uh, or on demand, it's just going to be super simple, and it's included with your program. I think of that as a bonus. It's really going to have very little impact on your overall weight loss and fat loss, but it's going to just make you feel better. And if you feel better, you're probably going to eat, choose to eat better, right? That's the greatest thing I, I, I know about exercise. Well, there's two key things. One is after workouts, I just feel a lot better. And the second thing is I'm stronger. I'm more confident, I would say. There's a, there's a lot of little things. But strength and confidence, yes, endurance. I mean, those are all the great things. But, it, you know, for you know, given I've had two knee surgeries now, I'm like, I had lost my confidence to go downstairs, upstairs. I mean, it was, it was really bad for a little while. And, yeah, I mean, today I actually just was jogging to the bathroom at my son's baseball game. And I, that was the first time I jogged. And I was like, hey, I actually feel like I can jog without hurting myself. This is actually a good sign. So I'm, I feel more confident that my knee is not going to give out underneath me. And that's strength training right there. 
Uh, you know, so uh, if you ever want to go skiing, I, I wouldn't go skiing right now. Hell no. Um, I'm not that confident. I'm pretty confident, but I'm not that confident. I like walking, so it's good. To, it's good to move. So I'm not going to chance that one, but uh, maybe next year, maybe. So strength training. So if you go to um, be better, I'm going to just go to this be better today dot life. This is how you access the workouts, whether in person or or uh, virtual. So be better today dot life. You go to schedule. So tomorrow, I oh here's Cheryl. Like the schedule, this is the overall schedule. Six a.m. Cheryl in Belmont. Seven a.m. live stream with me. If you want to sign up, you just hit the word sign up. Um, for those of you new, I got to actually enter you in. So Elise and Lisa, whoever else is uh, new to our uh, program, I have to enter you into this system still. So you won't be able to do it right now, but I'll have it done right after this. Um, Gerald's teaching at eight fifteen, just like the old days. Huh. Cheryl's teaching tomorrow. Interesting. Cheryl's te oh sorry. <laughs> Lori Lou's teaching at 8:30. Okay. I didn't know that. Maybe she is. I don't know. Um, so uh and then I teach Tuesday at 8. So there's not a lot of live stream, but you can go to any they can there's a million on demand as well. So if we go to videos here, you'll see uh, um if you want to listen to any of these, my 12 week program, you can. Um, I have a 14 day detox, 21 day keto. That was my kickoff before. I'll have a new one now. This one's totally different. These are just, these are body weight workouts. All my workouts are here, all be better virtual workouts. So Friday's workout, total body workout. That was me. So you click on it and that will play for you. Okay. So, um, just like you all, you all have taken my workouts for the most part, from my understanding, um, total body workouts are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, still Tuesday, Thursday, or core cardio recovery days. We have yoga on Sunday. Okay. Still the same thing there. Does anybody have any questions on exercise? Okay. Perfect. Love for you to get in the morning. Do whatever you can. Just try to try not to, uh, just sit all day. All right. Um, so, Good, good, good. All right. So this is our main hub for the keto. I made it <laughs> 10 minutes here. So this is the keto hub. <clears throat> so what I told you, I believe is more important. We've got a morning ritual. Okay. Evening rituals. I do want to just give you a couple. Okay. Just write PM rituals. I want to, I want to make it simple. Um, evening rituals. For me, it's get water prepared for morning. It's get my clothes ready for workouts. It's get my clothes ready for work. I lay it out in the morning because I can't think in the morning as well as I can in the evenings. Maybe that's just me. So I'm um, a little more wired in the evenings. I kind of force myself to go to bed around 10. I love to stay up later, but I want to wake up at 5.30 personally. I don't teach till 7 tomorrow, but I'm setting my alarm for 5.30 because... Over the last two years, I've set my alarm at seven and I haven't got shit done. So I've really enjoyed myself. I've been, you know, hanging out at my house, doing landscaping work and not really working very much. Uh, and I got really comfortable waking up at seven and I'm like, okay, I need to make some changes. So I used to wake up at 445. I never want to do that again. But um, yeah, I just, I need to wake up before everybody else in order to get, I, 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 part for me, my morning ritual is reflection. I didn't mention that, but I like to focus on my wins of the day before, do some prayer work, set, you know, write out my to do's for the day. I need to not be in a rush. I, 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 I do not have a good day when I wake up at, I, I mean, I used to wake up at 6 30 and teach a 7 a.m. class. It's just a rush. Um, and I just don't, I don't feel like I'm at my best. And five, so I tried six o'clock all summer and I just, I don't know, it just wasn't enough time. I wasn't as productive as I thought I would be waking up an hour earlier for whatever reason at 530. I think it's because I was waking up at six and my whole family was waking up at 615. And it just, that's when everything gets disrupted. I can't, I can't even think when my, my family wakes up, they're complaining and, you know, they want things done. They want food. They, they're asking me for, they're asking me questions. I don't want to talk in the morning. 
I just need to, I just need to like sit and quiet. <laughs> so 5:30 for me has been amazing and um getting a, just getting a lot of um quiet time in, reflective time and it's setting my day up for success. <clears throat> Evening routine, I got to go to bed, I got to wind down, I got to shut off the tech. So shutting off technology at like nine o'clock, 9.30 at the latest, uh, get those clothes ready, get the food ready for the next day. It's a really big one. What are you going to eat? If you're not preparing your food, you're just, you're not going to eat well, <clears throat> whether you're eating keto or whatever, right? So just think about what are you going to eat? I'm going to spend a lot of time on making it simple. And I think it, this program is relatively simple too. Like whatever you have for dinner, eat for lunch the next day. Consider having a smoothie or even the Bulletproof coffee for breakfast. Okay? So, but remember, you don't need to eat for 14 to 16 hours. It's it's easier. Life is easier. So, for at least you're going to bed at, your last meal is at 7.30. You know, don't, you know, your first meal should be between 9.30 and 11.30. Okay? 9.30 and 11.30. So, if I go to meal plans and grocery list right now, Okay, you see what I clicked on right there? Meal plans and grocery lists. This is just a model. Okay, so I'm going to click on this little thing on the right. It opens it up. Okay. All right, so tomorrow, it's just a rough idea. It's just, um, you know, it says basically, you know, so breakfast means for Elise, 9.30 to 11.30. So understand that. So 9.30 to 11.30 breakfast, eat two to three hours later. Um, so let's say you had 10.30. Um, so let's go uh, 12.30 lunch. Um, and maybe you have your snack at 3.30, 7 uh, yeah, 5.30, something like that. So 5.30 dinner, 5.30, 6.30 dinner, something like that. Just three to four hours. Every three to four hours eat. Try not to go hungry. If you get hungry after day one, eat more the next day. Okay? So this is just an idea here. Just eat. This is just an idea of getting more fat-focused. Pecans and, and uh, walnuts have fat and protein. A little bit of berries. And some coconut milk. You know, I was just... Again, I, I would probably never eat that, honestly. But just giving you an idea of... An idea. Okay. I actually did have bulletproof coffee today. I had pretty much that same thing, but I had a ta whole tablespoon of ghee and I had coconut oil. So this doesn't have the coconut oil in it, but you can go ahead and add that. You'll start seeing that in here. So bulletproof coffee is usually one tablespoon of butter or ghee, one tablespoon of coconut oil, or MCT oil, it is good to kind of slowly get, you know, more, they call it fat adapted rather than just going right to a tablespoon. So it's, you'll notice here, it's a, it's a slow addition of fats. If you look at Friday, <clears throat> they're also adding in an egg, but that could be MCT oil as well. You could also just take in any of these things. Like you could just do the same thing every day. Like Saturday, you could go tomorrow, okay? But again, that's breakfast at 9.30 to 11.30. What I would rather you don't do is I'd rather you not have coffee at 6 in the morning with coconut oil or butter. Does anybody know why? You see the, hour, the, the timing's different, right? Why would I not want that? Yes, Robin. What were you going to say? Please share. <laughs> it's it's too early. I haven't, that's like that, that becomes a meal then. Exactly. We're not we're not in a we're not going to be in a fasted state anymore. And then we're gonna. It's not going to really promote insulin because there's no carbs. But you you don't need to eat. <laughs> you just don't. I mean, I actually used to do that, <clears throat> and I I loved it. <laughs> But I was like, God, I'm full. Like I'm like I was full before I was even hungry. You know, it's like God, I just don't need to eat. It's a it's it's a couple hundred calories. So, um, and ideally, here's my recipe. Um, we got you know we didn't have any protein in here. We got one tablespoon of uh, the coconut oil, MCT oil, one tablespoon of the butter or ghee, and then um, I throw in a some some protein powder. 
I like this product called Pure Paleo. Um, that's also in here. But again, in the beginning, we're just trying to keep it simple. Uh, we can add more stuff to it later. I add cinnamon or pumpkin spice as well because um, I like a little bit of a pumpkin spice latte experience. There's some more recipes here, but just keep it simple. What's my protein? What's my vegetable? What's my fat? Okay, so those are just ideas. Okay. And then like bone broth. This is a great time for bone broth. It's cold. Bone broth is really good for you for um, bone density. Uh, if, you ever, if your kids ever fracture anything like my hand, have we kind of <laughs> have this thing going constantly on the counter. So it's a really great idea. Okay. So this is just some ideas. Okay. Again, you can send me your own. I'd love to see it. Okay. If you want to get more specific on your macronutrients, you can just enter your stuff into my fitness pal. Okay. But if we take a look at like, you know, this eggs, veggies, and avocado, eggs are the protein. Like this is for lunch on Sunday here. Eggs are the protein and fat. Veggies are the low starchy carbs. Avocado or guacamole could be the fat. And then one serving of roasted vegetables, right? It doesn't have to be, I am not a recipe person. So this, this meal plan doesn't resonate with me at all. I am so simple. Like for my typical breakfasts are a smoothie or the Bulletproof coffee. Actually, I don't do Bulletproof coffee in the summer. I just do it in the winter usually because it's just too hot here. It's 100 degrees here too often. So, um, yeah. So, and then I change my foods for seasons too. It's getting cold now. And uh, I want more soups right now and crock pot dishes right now and chilies right now and things like that. So, think about, you know, maybe looking into those kind of things like crock. You could type in the word keto or even paleo crock pot dishes. Keto, keto paleo um instapot soups whatever just it's it's so simple there's there's plenty of them out there but just type in the word paleo and keto and remember if you're doing a keto thing avoid dairy avoid almonds okay there's a million recipes if you don't like these or if you want to be like me keep it simple have a smoothie for breakfast maybe have a smoothie for a snack um lunch think for me it's usually this ground turkey Ground bison, ground beef, ground lamb. Those are it's the simplest thing on the planet. I just go buy a lot of ground turkey at Costco. We get we make our own rotisserie chickens in a Traeger, which I love, or I buy them. I just we we bought one today or already cooked one. Super simple. Um, ground bison, super simple to cook. They have it at Safeway. They have it at Costco. Um, Grass fed beef lamb i love the ground meats because i can cook it in five minutes i can put ground meats on a salad i could i can put it in a cassava flour tortilla which is my low carb option that i typically use i can put it i can have some sweet potatoes with it so i can have a lot of vegetables with it i just it's just so damn easy i love the the vehicle of a cassava flour tortilla though um just for simplicity, it just like, makes it easy to uh, eat. I even had a cassava flour tortilla today as a snack, and I put sunflower butter on top of it with just a little bit of honey and pumpkin spice. Simple. So, um, but I had my fat, which was the sunflower butter, a pretty good amount of it. Very simple meal, snack. Um, so again, very simple. A lot of vegetables, a lot of greens. Stock up on your good fats. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay. All right. So let me go back here. One second here. So I just want to make sure you just last couple things. Try to get back. Where are you back? Right there. Okay. There it is. So that was the meal plans. Um, if you look under getting started, just check that out. My success manual just kind of talks a little bit about background of keto, but as you can see here, I've not even talked about that too much. Um, I just want you to eat and be more aware of eating healthier foods, eating less often oftentimes, 
preparing, having some good morning and evening rituals, getting some workouts in. I want, I want you to do a lot of little things more consistently. Um, taking your measurements would be great. Um, this would be really, really great to fill out the goal sheet and send it to me. If you, if you just, just write down your goals, you'll be more likely to achieve them. Okay. Um, recipe guide. This is awesome, actually. Um, I love the little black dress recipes as well. Some of you have, have those. You can use those too. Those are, this is like solid. There's some really nice recipes in here. So uh, again, you want more recipes, just type in the word keto. Healthy keto. I don't even type healthy. Type in dairy-free keto recipes. I have a, an Indian source, vegan. Uh, this is a really great source too. Um, this lady, because I have, I do have a lot of vegetarians. This program, this keto program, in my personalized manner, has been um, really good for vegetarians um, that don't even eat meat. Um, so I'm just going to type in paleo. India, oh, they're right here. This lady has some amazing stuff. I, I know it's paleo. Again, they're all very, very similar. So um, paleo just means there's no grains in dairy. Okay, so everybody's got their little things, right? Paleo is all about, if it was around 10,000 years ago, it's probably not the best thing for you. Okay, I actually love this lady's stuff. She does a lot of vegetarian stuff and Indian stuff. And I have a lot of Indian clients. So, um, but great ideas. But again, if you're not a recipe person, this is a lot of work, right? But look at all this stuff. Doesn't that look good? Instapot stuff. So um, you can do a lot of things. Buying keto stuff is expensive. Buying paleo stuff is expensive. But if you learn to make it, it's uh, definitely easier. But myheartbeats.com is great. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me go back here. So success manual or recipe manual. Check. Um, nutrition swaps. You can look at that. Uh, how to transition out of keto. So that is a big challenge. Like, again, when people are in keto and then they go out and drink with their friends, they don't feel well. It's not that easy. So if you go from like low carbs to like a high carb, it is challenge. We could talk about that more later. Every uh, Thursday at 4.15, I will have a group call with my other coaching clients as well. Some people are doing keto. Some people are doing anti-inflammatory programs. It's fine. My goal is to answer your questions. We'll be sharing wins, sharing challenges, talking strategies. Okay, so um, that's every Wednesday at 4.15. Sorry, every Thursday at 4.15. I'll keep you updated on that on Voxer. Supplement Ideas, Designs for Health is my favorite um, company for that. Um, various other things here. Coaching. I told you about the protocol already. If you want to take the photos, go for it. So some other little key things here, like the breathing, your most important need. I'll give more details on that. Exercise, just how to get the most out of your workouts. There's just a lot of little things there. Uh, I think that's it. Nutrition tools, if you want to go learn more about intermittent fasting, lots of stuff in there too. Again, you can, you can spend hours on this, but my goal was today was just talk to you about the most important things. So I think I covered that. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me right now? A couple of you that are here. Okay. All right. Yep, yep, yep. Cool, cool, cool. Voxer, Voxer, Voxer is the most important thing. And if you, yeah, you guys can actually chat too and share um, on Voxer. I made it a broadcast too. So if it gets annoying, just turn your notifications off. But uh, yeah, if you want to share ideas, that'd be awesome. All right. Thanks, Great. guys. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have a good night. Bye. Bye.